Hi guys, so in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some proper paintwork now on this Volkswagen camper that we've been doing. So, it turned out that my GoPro and my SD card um, had failed, so I've borrowed mixed GoPro to shoot a few little videos for you guys this next few weeks. Well, I try and arrange getting a new GoPro ordered up and paid for. Now, we're going to be going through the bottom half of these doors, the same as I did it on the bottom half of the van. And also, we're going to be using a new spray gun today. So we've got the Welcome here. It's the Carbonio Light HTE clear coat that I'm using here. And this is in a 1.2 setup. Now, these guns are a little bit different to your average spray gun. The actual gun itself is a mixture of forged aluminium, carbon fiber, and stainless steel internals. Now, I'll explain a little bit about the gun as we go along, but I'm not going to explain too much because until I've got some proper use with these welcomes, I obviously I don't want to be saying that they're good or bad or giving you my you know final thoughts. This isn't a review on the gun, this is more a look at the paintwork on the van. So the bottom half of the paintwork on the van was done in the Volkswagen L345 light grey, which is what we're going to be doing on these. So we've bodyworked all these panels up exactly the same as we did with the van. And if you haven't seen any of the work on the van, I will leave a card in the video description, uh, a card in the video for you guys so you can move to go to the playlist for the rest of the videos on the van. Now, these have had the final primer, they've been DA'd off of the 400, so just above that body line like we did on the van itself. And then we're going to put some 2K gloss down on these panels. Now, the way that I do, like, sort of doors and stuff is I'll put three coats on I'll put two on the internal and three on the external so on the first coat we'll put a full coat over the complete area that we want to do so on the inside and the outside of the doors on the second coat we'll just do the outsides and then on the third coat we'll do the inside and outside again as long as the finish is nice on the inside and we've got full coverage then that's plenty and obviously on the outside I want that little bit extra material just so that I can give it a nice wet flat and polish. So that little bit of an extra coat on the outside will give me that little bit of an extra material to work with when I'm giving this a nice um, you know, wet flat and polish or cut and buff, whichever way you want to call it. So spray gun wise, like I said, I'm using the 360 Carbonio. Now, this was... I think this was the very, very first time that I used this gun um, for this job here. And so as far as starting off with this gun, I knew nothing about the settings that I needed as far as the fan or the fluid or the air or absolutely anything. And I mean, the digital gauges for these are a bit different to your standard digital gauges. So you've got like a conventional sort of cheater valve on the bottom and the gauge just clips into it. You, you can turn it on, adjust your pressure, and then you can actually clip the gauge off. So rather than having the gauge being an extra bit of, you know, space taken up, um, and the risk of obviously like, with some gauges that are quite big, obviously they're quite bulky against the bottom of the gun. This just ends up like half a cheater valve at the bottom instead, because um, the gauge itself comes away. Now when I first saw that, <clears throat> I gotta say, I didn't like the idea of it. I was sort of thinking I'd probably prefer a manual gauge like I normally would. Um, but the fact that you can just clip it off and then just stick it in you know, your paint suit is actually quite a nice little addition to these. Now, I've been interested in these for a while and a lot of you guys watching have been asking me about these spray guns for a while. And I have to say, from first impressions, I've used the 360 Carbonio, which I'm using here. And I've always used, also used the... Ego 190, the little minigun, and I have to say, I am impressed with both. Um, obviously, like I said, I've not had a massive amount of use with them yet, so as I get used to them over the next few weeks, then I'll start turning into making some review videos and things like that. But until that point, I won't make a review video until I'm sort of happy at where the gun's at, where my settings are at, and also how it compares to my Segolas. Um, which have been my everyday staple guns for quite some time now. Now just because I've got these welcomes in doesn't mean that I'm going to be using these for every single video. They will probably feature in a lot of videos over the next coming weeks 
um, just while I'm getting used to them and getting a feel for them. But I am going to keep a mixture of spray guns and a mixture of brands and a mixture of content as far as guns go on the channel because I don't want to keep it all to one brand. Now, my particular settings that I ended up for on this, I ended up with two bar of air pressure, which is pretty standard for doing top, like top coats, um, no matter whether that's been with my Segolas or my Iwatas or whatever. I normally settle in about the two bar mark. Fluid wise, I think I was running, I started off at about two turns, but then by the time I'd settled into the end of these panels, I was running two and a half turns on the fluid. Now that was putting a really nice amount of paint down, and I have to say, um, and it is in the title of the spray gun, this HTE Carbonio is a high transfer efficiency gun. Um, I've got to be honest with you, compared to like say my Segola DVR Clear, you can tell the difference in the transfer efficiency. There's not a massive amount of overspray from this. Um, when I was using the Ego 190, I did notice that I mixed up way too much clear. Now, it wasn't way too much clear for the job, it was just a lot, like a big difference in the amount of clear to what I'd normally use. Just for how well this gun actually transfers the material to the panel. Um, and you could tell all the way through when I was using it this first time, it felt like I was chucking out loads more paint than I actually was, but it's just extremely worked good at putting the paint down on the panel. So, going a little bit off track there, but <clears throat> I'm two turns out on the fluid and I ended up moving up to two and a half turns out on the fluid. Um, and at that, I was getting a real nice even coat. The only thing that I've noticed so far that I could sort of really say is a bit of a con with this gun and it's not a con because there are a lot of other guns out there that are exactly the same again the WS400 for example you do need to just turn the fan slightly in on this so if you wind it all the way out to fully open it's just a touch top and bottom heavy so I found that if you just turn it in slightly, it'll just take that top and bottom heaviness off it. It doesn't sort of like reduce the fan size. Um, it just tweaks it in just the tiniest little bit and then you get a real nice even fan on it. And as you can probably see here, you know, it's like the lay down on this thing is instant um, with these kind of settings. Um, and overall, I've used them a couple of times over this past week um, since I've got them because I'm absolutely mad busy at the minute and I am very impressed for like this was my very very first use um, and I have to say I was very very impressed at how they performed and also how they felt I thought at first when I picked one up they'd feel a little bit strange because they are so lightweight with them being carbon fiber um, but they don't feel like too light they don't feel like toy light in your hand um, they've, they've still got a nice little bit of weight to them and obviously once you've added in five six hundred mil of paint into a cup then you've got a bit of weight there so it doesn't feel odd in your hand now parts wise on this the body is forged aluminium and carbon fiber the handle and trigger are fully carbon fiber the air caps anodized aluminium the air cap rings carbon the nozzle needle springs etc they're all stainless steel so all the important parts are obviously made from either aluminium or a stainless steel and then the body itself is where they've reduced the weight now for a guy like myself that does a lot of respray work you know something like my dvr clear at the end of it the extra weight that you've got on a gun like that plus that pot constantly in your hand like i do have issues with my wrist because of the constant sort of pull on the weight i've got damage to the tendon in my wrist which sometimes can flare up and be quite painful so something like these lightweight ones will probably take a little bit of the strain out as well and i mean you can see where that first coat's gone down on there just how nice of a reflection there is on this panel and like i say this is my first use so i wouldn't say these came out as good as they could have because it literally was my first use of this spray gun. Um, and I tweaked between the panels how I was doing it, how fast I was doing it, um, how close I was moving, and also like my overlap to try and get a feel for where the sort of sweet spot was on this. So this is 
the second coat as I said I'm just gonna go around the edges and the faces for the second coat just to get that extra little bit of build on here so this extra paint that I'm putting down here as opposed to the inside is just my little better safe than sorry barrier for when I'm doing the flat and polishing work afterwards now there'll be one more video on this van which will be us painting the top half of these doors and then the footage of the final finished product um, which we'll probably put up next Friday for you guys um, I am sorry this video is late this week um, and obviously sorry about the footage the other week but I've been having big problems with my cameras and the amount I've had to spend this year on a new computer set up and a load of new cameras and everything it just couldn't have come at a worse time that my GoPro was gone um, but we'll be sorting out a new one very shortly so we can get back to filming a load of new videos and get some content rolling again so this van overall I have to say is coming out really nice at the moment I've just done as of recording well as of editing this today I've just done the tops of these doors and they've come out even better than the bottom did because um, we get a bit more used to this gun and the settings I'm gonna get it rebuilt over the next couple of days give it a quick flat and polish so we can get it back to the customer um, so as soon as I've done that I will shoot that final bit of footage for you guys for the last video now mix wise for this direct gloss I've gone for a medium hardener in it I've put around about 10% slow reducer in it which I just find helps with the lay down a little bit and the medium hardener um, just helps with retaining that gloss and that really nice gun finish when it's been baked off I will also leave a link in the description to the spray gun and also my air fed set up for you guys so you guys can get a little bit of a look at them from our sponsors over at SP Supplies um, do hope you've enjoyed today's video guys I know it's a little bit shorter than usual but I really wanted to try and get up some footage um, this week of some of the paintwork on this camper and also give you guys a little bit of a glimpse at some of the new kit that we're going to be using very shortly on the channel. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again soon for the next video. Bye for now.